Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, uh, April the 17th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media where I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and that market analysis. I do that same stuff in these daily market commentaries, but I'm layering on top of it some option strategies that we can implement into our portfolio. Uh, but you need to do that in your own way. I'm not here to give you guys investment advice or to give you trade recommendations. What I'm here to do is talk about the trades that I'm doing and how I'm finding those option strategies to implement into our portfolio with some simple rules or guidelines, I should say, maybe even that we use to find the right strategy for an assumption we come up with from that economic and geopolitical uh, and market analysis. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with the economic data. One thing we got today was LEI, Leading Economic Index. It is uh, one, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a index that actually is uh, compiled from some already uh, known data. So it's not usually one of the major movers of the markets, but something to keep in mind, this number has been coming out since 1959, all right? So it's got some longevity. Well, we got six point, negative 6.7 on that reading. It was better than the expected negative 7.1, but that is the lowest reading ever on this uh, economic data point. So something to keep in mind there, you know, it basically is combining a bunch of uh, 10 economic indicators employment, new orders, uh, consumer confidence, housing, stock market prices, credit trends, interest rate spreads, all of that stuff kind of compiled to get that leading economic uh, index. All right, so uh, that's all the economic data really that we have to go over. Uh, then we talk about the overall markets. We've got crude oil, look at this. It's uh, spiking higher uh, up into the 25 handle today. Well. What's that from? All right, what happened was last night, Gilead came out and said, or actually Chicago Hospital, a Chicago Hospital came out and said that Gilead Science uh, drug uh, Remdesivir, 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 something like that, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I have it in my head, but I can't pronounce it. Anyway, Ramdesivir, let's call it that. Uh, that drug was seeing a lot of positive effects on some of these people, uh, these patients they were treating, uh, and they were uh, had some of the more severe respiratory problems and stuff like that. So they were recovering much quicker by using that drug. Overall markets celebrating that. Uh, Dow Jones was up big overnight. As you can see here, crude oil was up because that would expect that we might be able to get out of our houses relatively soon if that drug was something that was going to be a, a major cure for this coronavirus. So crude oil, though, everything else is starting to kind of, uh, you know, come off a little bit. As Fridays, we see every Friday, it seems like nobody wants to hold anything over the weekend. So we're seeing that same uh, kind of situation going on today. Yesterday, we had that late day massive rally uh, in the equities and we're starting to see some of that. It probably was uh, some insiders getting some of that information about Gilead Science uh, and uh, that Chicago hospital. All right, we've got gold futures coming off about $30 right now, uh, losing a, quite a bit of steam since those highs, but we talked about that. That was pretty toppy uh, up there at 1788. Now we're starting to see it roll over just a little bit. One thing to note, we're below that nine day moving average. We talk about this while we're charting. You get below that nine day moving average and that shows a lot of short term weakness going on. Uh, so I would expect us to probably roll back down and even test this uh, 1658 area. But you can see bulls trying to hold on to the 1700 handle right now. All right, bonds. Again, we were talking about this somewhere basically between that 180 handle. They start getting below that 180 and the uh, 
the Fed comes in and starts buying and supporting that level. So we are up into the 180s, but pretty much unchanged for the day. As you can see there, we're just up about two ticks. All right, VIX is coming off. Well, not in Gilead. <laughs> yeah, all right, so here's what we're talking about. We gapped higher on that news from the overnight, and you can see this with the futures opening up quite a bit higher than where we uh, are now. We've covered that gap. But the Dow Jones right now is up about 360 points. You can see the high of the overnight session was printed about uh, 600 points higher in here. So we were close to 1,000 points overnight. All right. Uh, again, same situation here with the NASDAQ. You can see we opened up right about here uh, on the overnight session. So that was a gap higher. We have covered that gap and uh, getting a about a half back on this, which isn't bad. I've talked about this, you know, the moves back and forth today uh, or on these daily basis is something that we would expect to see. We can take out the overnight and see that the chart looks a little bit different there. Uh, we do have a gap to cover here uh, that might want to be retraced relatively soon. So the overall markets losing a little bit of a momentum heading into the weekend because nobody wants to hold stocks over the weekend, it seems like anymore. And similar situation near the lows of the day right now, although we are still up about 40 points uh, right now. Uh, let's take a look at the overnight session and the breakdown here. You can see this is that late day right at the last 30 minutes of the day, rip your face off rally. Probably some insiders, like I said, starting to hear about this Gilead uh, news coming out. So some whispers coming out and then gapped higher. So we opened up and made those highs overnight. And then kind of coming into the day, it was like, all right, well, it, it isn't a sure thing and some mumblings that, you know, it's only one hospital and not, necessarily anyone else is talking about it so maybe we uh sell you know bought the rumor bought the rumor sell the news kind of thing and um really just starting to lose that momentum throughout the day we covered that gap though so you know which way are we going to go i would have to lean towards we're going to keep that uh, bit of downward momentum going into the end of the day just because uh, it being a Friday and a lot of people not really wanting to hold over the weekend. So, uh, but some people would say, once you cover that gap, we could resume. I'm, I'm on the camp that we're going to kind of trend maybe sideways to slightly down. So I would look to the downside there. Something I want to talk about here. Here's that Gilead science, uh, chart. And if you guys remember, I am short some puts in there that I sold just a couple of days ago on the 14th. I was like, you know, this is the one that I would like to buy if I uh, had that opportunity. But I think that they're one of the people that are leading this charge on finding a cure or at least, you know, um, having the drugs in their arsenal that they can try to see if it is going to help, um, help some of these people. So, you know, bullish to the upside with that. Well, I sold some puts in that, like I said. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I sold some puts in there and here, let's pull this chart up over here or uh, this up over here. Something to really know. Uh, let me actually come back to the Gilead uh, chart. All right, so volatility, look at this move. We have, right now we're up $6 in Gilead science. Yes, well off the highs. Um, you know, which was up a, another $5, I think. Yeah, it was, well, at least uh, $3 and let's call it $3.50. So it was up about $9 on the day. Um, so gap higher there. Uh, but look at this volatility. Now, it doesn't look like that volatility moved that much. But if I look at it like this, all right, 60 being where it was yesterday, so we were at 60 and now we're at about 75. So we're talking 15 percentage points in implied volatility. All right, so $6 we'll call it. We're right around $6 up on the day, but 15% uh, increase in volatility, trading right around 75 here. So I sold these uh, 65 puts in there, the May 65 puts, all right? Sold those for right around a dollar and five cents. You can see it's trading right there. I sold those puts. That means I'm bullish. That means on a bullish move, a $5 move, 
I have a delta of negative 11. So $5. So delta tells us that for every dollar move, uh, the price is going to be affected by the delta, all right? So that's 11 cents, negative 11 cents. So for every dollar move higher, I should lose 11 cents out of my premiums. Remember, I sold them for a dollar and five. It's trading right around 95 cents to a um, dollar three. So right about where I got in, right? But we're $6 higher. That's about 65 cents, right? $6 higher, six times 11 cents is about 65 cents. Well, remember, we've got volatility coefficient over here and we've got a four cent Vega, all right? So fit Vega tells us that for every percent move higher, the price is affected by that Vega coefficient. So for every 1% higher, my price increases by that four cents. Well, I told you, we got 15 percentage point increase overnight. Well, 15 times 40 is 60. So you can see right middle of the road there, uh, it basically offset all of the gains by that volatility coefficient. Now, one of those things that we talk about in this is we try to sell volatility when it's at highs. Well, we don't always know what direction that volatility is going to go. And in this case, I got a big spike higher and that volatility really exploded and completely offset what uh, the uh, positive effects of what would have happened with my delta. So just something interesting to note, things that we talk about in these webinars and go into a little bit more detail about that. I don't always go into that much detail here in the webinars, but it's something that is really important to understand when we're trading options, how our prices can be affected by all these levers and pulleys in the markets. Um, so uh, something that we know usually even on the upside, we see that volatility coming out, but not as a, a, a coefficient of today. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. I haven't done anything with my overall portfolio as of today. I'm just gonna sit on it right now and wait to see what happens going into the weekend. All right, so hope you guys all have a great weekend. Why don't you guys like take a trip to the, the basement or the garage or something like that? You know, treat yourself. Do something positive for yourself, right? Anyway, if you can't take that, take it easy.